We have Josh Reeves with us from theglobalreality.com. He's a filmmaker, researcher, and radio host. He is behind the film The Secret Right, Volume 1, a film that investigates the secretive right-wing organization called the Council for National Policy, the CNP. It was founded in 1981 by the Reverend Tim LaHaye as a networking tool for leading U.S. conservative political leaders, financiers, and religious right activist leaders. We are going to begin to discuss the connection that the CNP has to the sovereign military order of the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templar, the Jesuits, but maybe more importantly we'll discuss the ties that the CMP has to the alternative media. This is going to be really interesting. We're going to begin at one end here and run through the full spectrum, if you will, and let the research lead us in an effort to try to answer why and how humanity has been controlled with the crown and the cross for such a long time. Welcome to Red Eyes Radio, Josh Reeves. It is great to have you with us here today on the program. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, how are you today, Josh? I'm all right, Henrik, and uh, thank you so much for having me on. It's a, it's a great honor for me to be here on Red Ice Radio because I've been a, a listener and a subscriber to the network for, for a long time and uh, uh, have actually played some of your interviews and stuff on my network before. And uh, I've also uh, interviewed Michael Desarian about five times, and you've, you've worked and done great work with him over the past several years. So I'm just excited to be here and be able to uh, talk to your audience about the things that I research and uh, talk about on my show and my film. So thank you again for having me. Absolutely. I uh, really appreciate it. It's going to be a lot of fun talking with you. You're behind the global reality, of course. Uh, you have your own radio show. You're making fil films like uh, The Secret Right, of course. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later as well. And uh, you have different parts to it. I, I guess you're still working on part two uh, upcoming. Is, is that correct? Yeah, I'm actually working on that now and uh, hoping to have that out by uh, sometime in August. And uh, we're going to do... Probably like a, uh, a a small release and kind of release parts of it, and uh, then we're going to have a big full release after that. It's just it's turned into a monster, Henrik, because there was um, so much information I had when I first started making part two, and then it just seems that every day there's new information coming out. There's more stuff coming out, and I try to get as as much new stuff into the films as I can as they're coming out. Literally, um, after we put the first the the day after the first film came out. Uh, which deals with a lot of the topics of these, you know, different right wing groups and stuff like that. We, we had the, the, the actual Tea Party group start the day after the film, uh, the first part of the film came out. And, uh, you know, it was already, it had exposed a lot of these people like Dick Army and others who, who had started the Tea Party, uh, and their involvement in some of these globalist organizations. So it was just the, the timing of that and all that's transpired now. Um, it, it, it's just turned into a, a much bigger monster than I thought. So I, I in this film, we're going to get a little bit deeper into, uh, uh, things like the Jesuits, and we're going to get a little bit deeper into uh, some of the things that these groups have been involved in. But I'm excited about the film. I'm excited for people to see it. So, uh, yeah, it'll be out very soon. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the first one here, obviously, as well. And what you've been doing is obviously looking behind the curtain a little bit of the alternative media as well, uh, quite a bit in your research. Uh, tell us here at the outset, uh, Josh, a little, little bit more about the global reality and, and, and briefly, obviously, how you uh, got into it as well. Well, absolutely, and that and that's a, you know the the whole looking into uh, of the alternative media and all this stuff didn't. I mean, it's not something I ever set out to do. It was something that completely happened by by accident and by happenstance. Because I, I was very much, um, when, you know, when I started my radio show, I was very much in what you would consider, you know, uh, the mainstream of the truth movement. I was very much, you know, a fan of of, of people like Alex Jones and David Icke and other people like that, and. Uh, that's really how I woke up. I woke up in, uh, when I was in high school. I'm 30, just turned 35 today. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, and, Josh. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, when I, uh, when I, when I, when I was about 16 or so, 15 or 16, um, I read, I, it was just so odd that the, the, the library in the little school I went to was way out in the country and there was only about 30 or 35 people in my class. But for some odd reason, they had a copy of Jim Marr's book, Crossfire, that deals with the, with the, uh, John F. Kennedy conspiracy. And this was in our library, and so I got in a copy of this, and uh, it just blew my mind. And, and, and at that time, I was, you know, being a young a young guy, I was listening to a lot of, you know, rock music. I was listening to stuff like, you know, Megadeth and Rush, and, and I didn't really realize until later that those lyrics were talking about these type of topics and kind of probably influenced me to look into that. So I had uh, read Jim Marr's Crossfire, and I'd, I'd sort of been in what you would call, you know, conspiracy research for a lot of years, but it wasn't until... After 9/11, I was I was working for a software company at that time, and uh, was making pretty good money. And, and then after 9/11 happened, I saw the mechanisms that were happening around me. I, you know, my job got shipped off to another country. I saw things, and finally, I was just like, you know what? I've got to start 
trying to do something. At that time, right for 9-11, I didn't know what that something would be. I just kept researching and trying to learn more and, 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 and everything else. And then uh, in about 2006 or so, I, I decided I wanted to make a, a documentary film. I was going to make this documentary film, which I still haven't made yet because I've been busy with all these other things. And it was going to be on um, – it was basically going to set the rec- record straight on secret societies because – for years, I felt like I had heard, you know, all this, all these different, uh, rumors and things about secret society. Some probably very true, others, other stuff not true at all. And so I kind of set out to disprove that. But somewhere along the way, it, 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 the, the film ended up turning into a 9-11 film because I had all this other stuff about 9-11. So in 2007, I came out with my first film. It's called, uh, 9-11 New World Rising. And, um, I had a premiere in, in, in Dallas for that film. And then just a few short weeks after that, I had, uh, I started my radio show. And again, like I said, you know, I was very much, um, you know, a supporter of Alex Jones and those type of people at that time. And I started my radio show and, uh, the third show that I ever did, we, we had been planning on having, uh, former Canadian diplomat and, and, and author, uh, Peter Dale Scott on my show on, uh, at, at our premiere in Dallas for the film. Hmm. And, uh, he couldn't make it. And so, uh, I was like, there I was doing a radio show. I had like an, a one hour show at that time. It just started. And he emailed me and I said, Hey, I've got a radio show now. Would you like to come on? And he said, Sure. So Peter Dale Scott came on. That was huge for me. You know, big guest, just my, uh, third, third show in. I was really, uh, a rookie and not that good at doing radio yet. But during the interview, uh, Professor Scott had mentioned this group. I, I started mentioning groups like the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg Group and stuff. And he said, uh, Well, you know, there's this other group you should look into and they're way more secretive, way more powerful and a uh, lot less people know about them. Um, and they don't really have the CFR doesn't really have the power they they used to have anymore. This group's way more powerful, and they control things like Blackwater, and uh, they're involved in the military industrial complex. And he said the name of the group, and I couldn't really understand him that well. And I went back to the to the rebroadcast over that weekend and listened. He said, "Oh, the CMP, the Council for National Policy." Okay, hmm. so I, I go and I start looking up this group because he said that they had affiliations in 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 the ta- in Dallas where I live. That's my hometown. So I was going, "Wow, you know, I'm definitely intrigued like this because you know, Henrik, I." I felt that, um, as a lot of people do, you know, that was the whole reason why I wanted to do a show at that time. I felt that, that, um, I've been doing a lot of research for a lot of years and that I had a pretty good handle on this stuff. And uh, I mean, well, I couldn't have been, uh, any, any more wrong about that. It turns out that, you know, as much as I knew at that time, it turns out that I didn't know nearly as much as I thought that I did. And every day I learned more. And uh, so I'm going and I'm, I'm researching this group, the Council for National Policy. And I, I come to find out that the, the strangest thing about it, Henrik, as soon as I start researching it and trying to find people who are involved, because it's very secretive, they meet three times a year uh, in, to- in total secrecy. They meet in posh hotels. They don't make their membership lists available to the public. And, you know, I was sort of saying, well, you know, why aren't there people staking this thing out like they do the Bilderberg mm-hmm. group meetings? That's right. That's right. And, you know, it just seemed very odd to me that, that nobody was doing that. And so I started finding, you know, what I could find. They don't make their current membership lists public but we are able to get past membership lists and then there's other times when people who are currently members just um admit that they're members and and so i i've found this very interesting thing where it seems like people who are kind of on the lower level um are openly freely admitting the group and 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 saying that you know hey this is what we're doing and then other people are very secretive about it but um the biggest thing that stuck out like a sore thumb for me was that i started noticing immediately that all of these different names of people who I had heard on the Alex Jones show through the years, people like Dr. Stan Monteith and, 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 uh, Pat Buchanan and, uh, uh, Larry Pratt from Gun Owners of America, just on and on and on. I mean, it was just one after another, uh, Jack McLam. I, I just, not one name, not two names, not three names, but four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten names of people who were members of this secretive group that was started by uh, the Hunt Oil Brothers, who are uh, who are Knights of Malta members as well, and uh, they were the ones that paid for the Wanted for Treason posters that were published in Dallas, Texas, uh, the day before the Kennedy assassination in 1963. And I started saying, "This is, you know, th- 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 this is connected to the highest levels here." Yeah. And then I started finding Rothschilds in the group. I started finding Duponts in the group. I started finding more and more people that seemed to be, uh, like Phyllis Schlafly, for instance, connected to these various bloodlines. Of the elite, and um, I, I just I, something was really, really shaken in me by that, Henrik. I just, I, I was, I was rather dismayed. I mean, I, I couldn't sleep for three or four days. I was, I was really freaking out because, and I showed it to another fellow radio host at that time, and I said, you know, can you look at this for me? You know, can can you just take a look at this information and tell me what you think about it? And uh, the person said to me, yeah, you know, if this is 
what what you think it is. This could be very interesting, and uh, so that's sort of what it led me, Henrik, into not really. I was never sent out to look into the alternative media or anything else like that, or never sent out to try and be one of these because there's a lot of people out there that claim to be exposers of people, and a lot of what they claim to expose is just it, it's just loose stuff. I mean, there's a lot of people that say bad things about Alex Jones and other people, and they're just not based in reality. They're not based in fact at all, and I think that's dangerous because I never sent out to be someone who's trying to chastise somebody else's work or or say anything else at all. But there are some serious connections with uh, that they go right up to the very top of the quote-unquote New World Order of the Illuminati, and they're connected to this group. And it seemed to me there's been such a moratorium uh, on talking about it that, to me, that I inherently knew there was something behind it. Well, absolutely. That's really interesting. And I think that uh, I like what you say earlier as well, that we, we, we never – have the full picture, it seems. Again, the, the, those who are willing to continue their research and not, not stop at one point, obviously know that there's more behind the surface. It's an, it's a, an onion with, uh, you know, infinite layers, if you will. <laughs> you know, it, well, it goes look, deeper and deeper and deeper all the time. That's what I like about your show is because, you know, it, you don't really, you're not really judgmental on people and their information. I mean, you just allow people to come up here, uh, and put out their information, regardless of whether or not you agree with it 100% or, or, or don't agree with it or anything else. That's right. You're just providing people with a platform. And I think that that, to me, is the most important thing for any of, of us to be doing. You know, just regardless of whether you agree with something or I agree with it, let's put it out there on the, on the court of public opinion and let people decide for themselves what's real or not. And that's all I've ever asked people to do with this information as well, Henrik. Absolutely. That's a really good strategy in that sense. Let the, you know, listeners decide. Uh, that there's no reason to, uh, you know, not go anywhere or, or you know, s- censor obviously certain things. That's uh, obviously uh, not something that is of, of all at interest. I think that the most important thing is to try to uh, get as much, v- you know, varied information as you can, as you're, you know, as you're aware of, because that's another thing as well that I, I notice uh, among some critics out there, if you will, as well, Josh. They don't leave any room for the fact that it might actually be such that you don't know about it. Because how can we? We don't know everything. We can, we don't have all the capabilities that everyone else has, or or the time to look into certain details about certain little groups here and there. But instead, I guess what I'm saying is that instead of just being criticized for that, uh, why not just bring it to people's attention in the same way that you have? But I I totally agree with you, Josh. What you said about the 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 Bilderberg focus, the focus on skull and bones and the Bohemian Grove when we have many different groups behind the scenes doing many different things as well, and there seems to be an, an over-representation, I guess uh, you're saying as well, on, on just focusing on certain groups when there is tons of groups out there, different agendas, uh, different uh, people that are striving for different things. And this is about, I guess, as well, kind of balancing the picture a little bit, knowing who's behind what and who's saying what, basically. Right, Josh? That's the whole thing is, is for me, Henry, because that's why when I started my radio show, that's why I called it the global, the global reality is because... Um, you know, I started noticing that it seemed that people were kind of putting this focus in America that, you know, this whole New World Order stuff where all this stuff was only happening in the United States. And that's just flat not true. It's happening all over the world, and it's affecting everyone globally. So the reality that we face is not just a reality that is compartmentalized to one specific country or one area. This is a reality that is global, and it affects everybody, and we all need to know about that. So, I, you know, I when I first started getting into this stuff, I got into it because of, the research, and because I felt like the information needed to be, uh, you know, looked into farther, and, and we didn't have the whole picture. And when I started noticing, you know, even before I found out about the Council for National Policy and, and sort of this information we're talking about, I, I, I started noticing, I, I couldn't understand why um, sort of the focus of, like, the truth movement in the United States was sort of, you know, you'd have people talking about, you know, their guns and their ammo and their weapons. And, and I'm going, you know, what does this have to do with, Research. I didn't sign up to be some, you know, uh, uh, some survivalist or some crazy uh, person who wants to hunker down in their bunker. Just something seemed odd right. about that to right. me, and uh, I think that, that 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 very much ties into this information exactly what you're talking about. I'm not trying to say that the Council for National Policy is more powerful than any other group, or there's one uh, sp- specific group in control. But one of the things that ha- has come to my attention over the past four years of researching this is that all of the information that um, that really is the deeper elements of this. I would say stuff like the uh, Sumerian texts, like Anunnaki stuff, uh, Jesuit information, all of this information that is it is kind of left out. I think with intent it's been left out so that people don't see the great picture. They, you know, they, they, they see a little bit of the picture, but they don't see the whole picture. And when you have the rest of this information, 
it makes the whole much larger picture seem a lot more clear to you. And I started noticing that there was this sort of this moratorium on uh, on on. I, I noticed it on 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 your your network and stuff on in the past where people would come on and kind of get mad at you guys or have a problem with you guys because you guys would uh, talk about you know uh, ancient aliens or you would talk about extraterrestrials and the possibility of this seeding life on the planet. And some people had a problem with you guys talking about that. And I right. always wondered about that. I just said, you know, it seems very strange to me that there, that 